Hello, what we're going to be discussing here is the MC3479 stepper motor controller. <coughs> Excuse me. To find out more on this and other electronics projects, visit www.bristolwatch.com. The MC3479 is, is designed to operate largely low power stepper motors. Um, usually in the 12 volt range would be best. Um, while it is designed to operate bipolar, I'll show you a way to operate both bipolar and unipolar motors. Um, basically how to connect them to a microcontroller and how to boost the power to operate substantially more powerful motors than it was designed to operate with. The uh, 3479 is a 16 pin dip device as pictured here. Uh, we're going to discuss the various pins and inputs as we go along in this video. Let's look a little closer at its capabilities. It has an operating supply of 7.2 to 16.5 volts. Uh, it would be nice if it operated at 5. It does not. It has a max coil capability of 350 milliamps. Um, that will operate a small motor. It will come nowhere near operating a large motor. And we will look at how to get around that problem. Uh, if you just want to operate a small motor directly, it has built-in uh, clamp diodes to take care of spi uh, voltage spikes. What is nice is the in built-in internal logic where simply on a pin with a high or a low you can collect you can uh, control clockwise and counterclockwise full and half step you can select the output impedance which only applies to the half step mode and yes you can operate it in full step or half step pictured here is basically uh, the logic block diagram. Over here on the left side you have a clock input. It ha A positive going edge trigger clock is what will uh, step, uh, will give you a step. A high or a low will give you, uh, a low will give you clockwise, a high will give you counterclockwise, a low is full step, a uh, high is a half step, and the OIC, it's, that's output impedance. Um, I, there's not a lot of use for that particular pin. They got something called phase A. Um, there's not much use for that either in the applications I'm using it for. And we'll look at bias set in a couple of minutes. Here again is your uh, logic chart. It's in the spec sheet for the device and it's the uh, low input on CW gives you counter uh, clockwise high gives you counterclockwise and so forth we already mentioned that note again the clock which give every positive going edge triggered clock pulse will give you one step here is a little bit more of an actual circuit how it would be hooked up. Um, you got L1 and L2 that goes to one coil, L3, L4 goes to another coil. For the most part you can connect 1 and 16 together. I never bothered to use the Zener diode that they recommend. These pins are grounded. This is the bias set. The value of RB when you have a high input this is going to have a low output. For the most part, sometimes you can simply ground a uh, RB. That sets your um, current in your uh, motor coils. That's what it's used to control. What is nice about it is if you leave it high, 
you shut the device off totally but if you ground it um, then it will operate so you can use the bias set to control both the output current on the coils and to shut the output on and off completely if you want to there's another block diagram it has two sets of four transistors if you notice over here on your upper uh, right corner it has two sets of four transistors that act as an H bridge to control the direction of the motor coil look on your left side here is your RB resistor um, that sets the uh, current output to the uh, motor coil and then you have the current drivers and logic and the logic decoding circuits this saves the uh, programmer on a microcontroller a lot of trouble believe me it's a lot easier to use this than to try to program it up in software and it's more flexible here is basically a blow up of my circuit I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit okay look on the left side of the uh, picture you will see here's the MC 3479 L1 goes off to one pair of L3 L4 goes to one set of optocouplers L1 L2 goes to the other set of optocouplers here's your clock your OIC input your clockwise counterclockwise step full step these are connected directly to Arduino output pins or you can hook them to a pickaxe I've had this hooked to pickaxe um, microchip picks and uh, Arduino they're a 5 volt logic it's simply on and off or clock over here the 68k is the value I chose for the RB resistor that we talked about earlier it's in the lower left corner in this case I used a um, transistor down here uh, high input cuts the 2N22 22, 22 on and enables the output on the 3479 again looking at our left side is right side of the circuit we have two sets of optocouplers and they are wired in pairs back to back so whatever polarity voltage is put out by L1 or L2 or L3 L4 is going to light up one or the other or enable I should say one or the other optocouplers but never both at the same time the reason I chose optocouplers is I got away from this problem of operating at 12 volts. If I'm using optocouplers, uh, I can operate um, by using uh, power transistors or an L290, uh, I think 7N, which I'll show in a minute to operate a bipolar motor I can considerably boost the power and I get all of the benefits of the built-in logic of the 3479 let's look a little closer at what we're dealing with with a stepper motor a stepper motor has a stator with a set of coils by switching these coils on and off in a sequence we can cause the rotor to um, rotate if you look close at the rotor it consists of a series of magnetic poles north south north south north south so it basically comes down to by magnetic attraction and repulsion and switching the coils on in the right sequence we can rotate the shaft we can control the speed and we can forward and reverse it all depending on how we switch the coils on and off um, the coils do reduce, produce some limitations. Uh, there is a limit to the speed that you can switch these on and off because the inductive reactants at really high speeds 
begins to play games with you. The way they the reactance actually slows it down and makes it harder to switch. Now to get away from that problem a lot of your stepper motors will go for low voltage high current with less turns to get around that problem but then again you've got to supply some pretty hefty current sometimes. There's actually four major types of stepper motor winding configurations. We'll briefly go through them. On the far left, we have the four wire bipolar. Um, it simply has two coils. And by switching the polarity on the individual coils uh, in the proper sequence, the rotor will spin. A six wire unipolar actually has you could say four windings or I really it has two windings with a center tap um, you would connect the two center taps to V plus and then switch the uh, other four ends uh, through uh, power FETs or bipolar transistors whatever it takes in a sequence to get the rotor to spin Note something they don't tell you is that if you leave the center taps disconnected, you can operate them as a bipolar. That's right, you can operate a unipolar as a bipolar, but you can't operate a bipolar as a unipolar. Sorry, it doesn't work. Our third type stepper motor is basically like the six wire, but it's a five wire, and you notice the V plus connections or the center taps are wired internally together. You cannot operate this type of motor as a bipolar. It always has to stay unipolar. That's it. The fourth type is an eight wire bipolar or unipolar by wiring the uh, four windings in the appropriate manner. We can operate as a um, six wire unipolar or we could operate as a four wire bipolar. Here's an example of a low power um, stepper motor. This is the one type you're more going to commonly see is this. These are heavy, these are power hungry and you need some power for these. The 3479 will not operate this kind of motor. Not directly, not unless you can find a way to boost the power, which we are going to do. Here is my driver circuit based on the uh, four optocouplers that I had from before. They're sitting here driving four NPN power Darlingtons. They're TIP120s. And you can look at the coils here. These are each of the separate coils. This side of the connection over here would have been really the center taps. Um, this over here where the collectors are connected to 5 volts. You can probably go ahead and connect it to 12. Um, if you're going to do that, change the uh, four resistors to uh, uh, 4.7K. As this is set up, the 2.2Ks work fine for 5 volts. Pictured here is the L298N. We can actually take the outputs of the optocouplers instead of running them to those NPN Darlingtons, we can actually connect them in through D9, 10, 11, and 12 here. Um, you would connect D8 and D13 to a high somewhere. But nonetheless, this would give you, this would change the output signal. By the way, you have to drop a resistor from each connection here to ground besides the optocoupler connections. And this will change the output back to bipolar. So I can operate a considerably more powerful bipolar motor using the L298N and still get the benefit of its advanced logic and easy control with higher power. 
This is a little uh, L298 in module. You can buy these off of eBay for six, seven, maybe eight dollars with the postage. Easy to hook up. It is not worth building the individual circuit. I'm sorry, I mean, and particularly if one can't solder and you don't want to waste a lot of time, spend the six or seven dollars and get the control board. It does the same thing as the other circuit. A lot easier to handle. Here's just an illustration of the old connections. Let me blow this up a bit and bring it down. This is the uh, ULN 2003. It's actually a um, seven output magnetic coil driver. This is what it would have looked like on the old Arduino connection, but uh, yeah, this will drive the coils of the particular stepper motor here within reason, but I lose all of my advantages that I would have gotten on the uh, other ch uh, chip, the 3497. Nonetheless, you see the four inputs here. You could have connected the four outputs from the optocoupler directly to this, and you could have driven the coils and used the advanced logic of the 3479. And that's it for this basic little tutorial. The next part of the uh, part two will be actually connecting it up and you can see it operate and run. Thanks for listening to the video.